All right, here are solutions to quiz three for math 60. Here are solutions. Um, okay, this first problem, we're asked to convert these fractions into decimals. Uh, the, I think the easiest way to do that, well, maybe to use a calculator, but the easiest way to do that without a calculator is to do long division. You always take the number on the bottom of the fraction and you put that on the outside. And then what you do is instead of just 11 goes into 7, you do 11 goes into 7 point and then add as many zeros as you need to. So we can't get 11 into 7, so we have to put a 0 here. But if we add a 0, we can do 11 into 70. Um, let's see, 11 times 6 would be 66. And then if we do 70 minus 66, we get 4. And then because you do not have a 0 here, we'll continue. So we'll add another 0 here, which comes down. And then we go 11 into 40. Well, 11 times 3 is 33. That gets a little closer. And then we subtract. And now 40 minus 33, you get 7. And you can bring down another decimal if you want. Um, but if you're kind of clever, what you'll notice is that we're just going to repeat. Right, it's the same problem as it started out. It was 11 goes into 7.0. 11 goes into 70. If we brought down another 0 here, we'd have another 70. Kind of this 7 and this 7 are the same. So we're just going to keep repeating. We'd get a 6 and then a 3 and then a 6 and then a 3. Just the way you write that. Well, maybe is with a bar on top of the repeating digits. So what this means is we got 0 0.636363 forever for infinity. So our final answer would be 0 0.63, the bar on top. And I'll do something like that to indicate that's the final answer. Um, same idea here with 5 eighths. Take the number on the bottom, put it on the outside. We can't get 8 into 5, but what we could do is get 8 into 50. Um, let's see, 8 times 6 is 48. Gets us close. 50 minus 48 is 2. Not 0, not repeating, so we continue. 8 goes into 20. Twice gets us 16. And if you subtract, 20 minus 16 is 40. You might be worried that I'm running out of room, but you don't have to worry because 8 goes into 40 exactly 5 times. We put another 40 down here, and then we get 0 for our remainder, which is good. So what we get is 5 eighths is exactly 0.625. Um, this decimal doesn't repeat, it's an exact answer. So we get 0 0.625 is our answer. All right, part C here, it says, use your answers to part A and B to determine which of uh, whether each of these statements is true or not. Um, I think that's the right weather, but whatever, not the point. Um, we figured out that 7 elevenths was 0.63 repeating. So what we have here is the absolute value of negative 0.63 repeating. And I want to know, is that greater than the absolute value of negative 0.625? Our answer to part to what negative 5 eighths is. Um, well, the absolute value gets rid of the negative sign. So what we get here is 0 0.63 repeating. And what we get over here is... 0 0.625. So they're pretty damn close, but 0 0.63 is bigger than 0 0.62. So this one is bigger, so this right here is true. Um, now we do it again. Now we got negative 7 elevenths, and we want to know is that greater than negative 5 eighths? Well, let's see, negative 7 elevenths is negative 0 0.63, and negative 5 eighths is negative 0.625. Um, and this one's kind of tricky. You might think that this is bigger than this because this number is bigger. But um, a greater than sign, another way to think about it is to the right of on the number line. And if you put these both on the number line, this number would be to the left of this one. Um, I guess I can illustrate that over here. If we had 0 right here and negative 1 over here, what we would have is negative 0.63 repeating somewhere in here and negative 0.625 somewhere over here. This isn't to scale, those are actually a lot closer than that, but this kind of gives the right idea. So this is to the left of this 
So this is not true, this is false. Um, all right, good enough. Now we have these two algebraic expressions that we're asked to simplify. Um, what this will end up being is an exercise in distributing. So what you do is three times this whole thing, we have to take the three and multiply it to both terms. Maybe I can illustrate that by doing something like this. And then we'll take the two and multiply that to both terms. So what we get when we do that is three times two x is six x, and three times negative five is negative 15. And a positive two times four is eight, and a positive two times negative x is negative two x. Um, and you might not need this next step, but addition is commutative, so you can switch the order that you do it. So we could think about this as 6x plus a negative 15 plus 8 plus a negative 2x. In other words, we could write this as 6x minus 2x minus 15 plus 8. You don't need to do this in between step. You could jump all the way from here down to here if you want. Um, but 6 minus 2 gives us 4x, and negative 15 plus 8, a little bit trickier, um, that ends up being negative 7. Um, so we get 4x minus 7 as our answer. And finally, this guy, it's the same idea. Maybe I'll switch colors. We want to take this 2 thirds and multiply it to each of these terms. Um, but actually, before we do that, maybe we should get a little bit clever here. You could do it that way, but I think an easier way would be to first combine like terms on the inside. We got a 5 minus 2, we could call that 3 plus 9x. So if we put this 5 and negative 2 together as like terms, we could go here. And now it's a little bit easier to distribute this 2 thirds into these numbers. 2 thirds <coughs> times 3. Sorry about my dog. Uh, 2 thirds times 3 is just 2, and 2 thirds times 9x is 6x, and I'm going to go take care of my dog. That's the end of this problem um, and the end of this quiz.